I've just finished my first three months with using Netflix. I don't mean like I've ended the subscription. I mean, I just completed three months of having the subscription. And in this episode, I want to talk about the service itself in the context of a zero waste or frugal mindset. I know I'm late to digital subscriptions. This is actually my first digital entertainment subscription. I've been making do with questionable websites until recently. And that's only because a particular TV series couldn't be found online and it needed subtitling and they don't and they definitely don't come for free interestingly for me at least once i had subscribed it was a revelation with regard to how easy it was to watch content or watch and find content now please understand i don't have a tv i haven't had one since 2013 and to make do with watching new things i either went to the cinema <clears throat> i bought the odd movie of itunes or I went to the aforementioned websites. <clears throat> in my first Netflix week, I felt I was brought out of the dark ages in terms of digital entertainment. I could look back on that and think, oh my God, I spent so much time trying to find movies for free. And yet Netflix exists uh, for only $5 a month. It's only $5 because I share the service with my partner. Five US dollars, by the way. Now I'm taking this revelation and newfound appreciation to another level with the zero waste frugal mindset philosophy. For those listening, this episode has more to do with being frugal and balancing that with some semblance of still being a social outgoing person. You know what I mean? That aside, let's take the initial value of the service that I discovered and then improve upon it in order to save ourselves some money. And side note, while the focus here is on Netflix, it can of course apply to your digital service of choice as well. I know for me, if I watch a movie at the cinema, I'm probably going to be less interested in seeing it again when it would later come out on Netflix or even when it was on a free website because I've seen it. So what if I stopped going to the cinema and in one fell swoop, I'm saving myself money, I'm saving myself time, stress, while also teaching myself maybe some mindfulness and patience. So let's break it down in terms of money. Cinemas are expensive, aren't they? And I speak as somebody who doesn't even need to bring kids, nor am I somebody who buys food at the cinema, and I already think it's expensive. I mean, say no more about saving money and going zero waste if you were to just not buy cinema food. It's overpriced, it's unhealthy, and it's served in a single-use container. So if you just did that one thing, you'd be saving yourself money and obviously doing your bit for the environment. I know, I know. It's all about being social and stuff. Peer pressure, though, does seem rather expensive. Now, maybe it's different where you live, but I've always been able to bring my own food and I've never felt the need to buy cinema food. The second savings to make, I don't know why I'm clapping my hands so much. It's because I can't rock the table. The second saving to make is on the actual ticket. For a single ticket, I'm looking at between eight to 16 US dollars in Hong Kong. I think you can see where I'm going with this if I'm comparing value solely by ticket price. More on that later though. The cost of a ticket can pay for Netflix for up to one or three months at a time. Cinema visits are usually for me three or four times a year anyway. So it's not like I'm a massive cinema goer, but there's enough of a me, there's enough of me to, th to think about not going anymore to want to talk about this. Anyway, it works out that I could pay for one year's worth of Netflix with just those three or four cinema visits in Hong Kong. In addition, I can also eat, I can pee, and I can stop the movie whenever I want. When we talk about saving time, I don't have to physically travel to the cinema anymore. I don't have to queue up, I don't have to download the cinema app and search for a cinema with the best seats or prices. And while I'm already getting annoyed with how long it takes to find something to watch on Netflix, I'm probably still saving time versus all the preparation involved for that single cinema visit. Of course, if I'm searching for things and I don't want to watch it today, I could add it to my list. So I'm accumulating other things to watch, aren't I? Stress, this is actually the biggest one in terms of saving myself from going all Netflix. Stress is something that I've wanted to solve forever. And not enough of us hate on people, for other people, for talking or checking their phone during the movie. The bright screens are always distracting, even in the peripheral vision, you can just spot it. And I can't never not ignore that. I also 
can't shout across the aisle and just tell someone to pack it in. Otherwise, I'm the bad guy, aren't I? But nobody is messing with me in my home, that's for sure. Now, when it comes to developing patience, this is where the biggest payoffs can occur. I feel in recent years, with the ever-increasing hype around tentpole movies especially, and the studios have so cleverly trained us against FOMO, we need to go, we end up needing to go and see that event movie. And if we don't, well, whatever spoilers we encounter online, it's basically our fault, isn't it? We've got to close browser tabs. We've got to avoid Twitter or Facebook because some asshole will obviously spill the beans and spoil the movie. It's a cultural problem that suits the movie studios. Well, you know what? I, I actually stopped caring about spoilers. I don't care because at some point I'm going to be surprised anyway whether someone tells me or it's in the movie because no one told me. And I've lived through Endgame, Avengers Endgame. So nothing will ever top that. And so why should I include this worry in my life? Forget it. Doesn't matter. I'm paying. I've got to pay to worry less about things in life that obviously a lot of men like me take, take for granted. This is where women have figured it out because waiting for a movie is fine. And yes, while it is frustrating that your loved ones know nothing about the movie that you love, that's also the solution. Don't love it. Don't get involved. Just know it's going to come out and just wait a bit. Life would be simpler, wouldn't it? Let's be mindful here. Why allow someone else to profit from your untrained ability to just wait? If you train it up, they don't make that money, do they? from you and you don't lose it anymore. Need another reason to be mindful? What about if the movie isn't all that it's cracked up to be? Let's pretend just with this comparison, um, with no other factor that I've mentioned, I can watch 10 movies per month on Netflix for five US dollars, or I can watch one movie at the cinema for five US dollars. If I've only got one chance to watch a good movie, what I think is a good movie before going in, then I'm going to be very careful with what I pick. Whereas on Netflix, I won't be as careful, will I? But then if I do pick incorrectly at the cinema, well, I've wasted $5. But with Netflix, if I pick incorrectly, how many times will I do that? Once? Twice? Even if I did, I've still only spent $5. That's like 50 cents, US cents per movie. Um, the last movie I watched at the cinema was Spider-Man, the, the second one. And I didn't really enjoy it. And yet I had to pay $16 to not be in, to not enjoy it. The, to me, there's no logic in that. I'd rather just wait till it comes out on Netflix, then watch it, which that's what happened just only six months later. Do I really need to be part of the conversation that occurs online? Am I really going to contribute anything of value? Really? Is my opinion even that important? That's what I mean by mindfulness. What do I get? <laughs> I just get an emptier wallet. The value. Let's talk about the value that we get from Netflix. Now that you understand my position, hopefully you can see that value from this perspective of approaching Netflix, especially if I just wait, skip the cinema, and let the Netflix library grow in value because I don't go and see everything at the cinema. But this only comes by being an active participant with choosing what to watch. Now, many people complain that Netflix isn't worth getting because you've already seen all the movies. Fair enough. But that isn't Netflix's fault, is it? If you think about it, you choose to see those movies in the cinema because they are in the cinema first. Well, what if they weren't? What if movies came out, which they are slowly doing? What if they came out on Netflix first? There's more value for Netflix, isn't there? I'm saying taking a passive role towards entertainment over time is going to be expensive. Cinema numbs the value of Netflix when, in my opinion, it should be the other way around. Netflix should numb the cinema. Another aspect of the value proposition is with a movie like Dunkirk, and this is my example. I missed watching it at the cinema. Netflix gave me a chance to catch it, great. But while I regret not seeing it at the cinema, and it can seem I'm undermining my own argument here, please note how much I was charged to see it on Netflix. I didn't have to rent it on iTunes which would have nearly cost me the price of a one month subscription anyway. But would I appreciate the movie as much as I did if I watched it at the cinema in the first place? Because my iPad speakers aren't obviously up to par with whatever Dolby sound surround system that exists in the cinema. My appreciation for that movie has grown, whereas in the cinema I would just take it for granted. 
especially with regards to the sound and the sound is so evocative so meaningful in that movie oh and one last point for value i can sit or lie in my own damn chair or bed can't i when i'm watching netflix at home and summarizing now for myself moving forward with this mindset i employ i still might however go and see that one movie if i need to but my default position now is to just not go to the cinema anymore and while not necessarily in my case save money just add value to what i'm already spending on netflix you might make actual monetary gains by not taking the entire family you don't have to buy as many tickets or you make food at home you make your own popcorn at home and maybe you buy it organic so you can still have those treats but they're healthier and they're probably cheaper than what you would pay at the cinema for anyway that's my take i hope you find that useful for you because it's all about saving money on this channel but i do want to finish with something else a user contribution from r slash frugal on the reddit uh, website taking the money saving aspect even further so this is from an experienced Netflix user. His uh, username is VinMen2. And he notes the loss of content on the Netflix service and the price increases don't justify themselves anymore. Now remember, I came late to this and I haven't received a price increase yet. But if I do get one, I might have insulated myself against them because I've just spent all this time trying to justify Netflix versus the cinema, going to the cinema. What VinMen2 is suggesting is to cancel the service with one month on and then one month off over the course of a year, you've effectively paid for Netflix over, what, six payments? So that's six months, halving your costs for using and enjoying that service. And if you are concerned about all your preferences, Netflix does save them for up to 10 months anyway. So it isn't really a big deal in Ven Men 2's case. Other users have contributed to the discussion and they state that cancelling it might be worth uh, more if you cancel it over a longer period of time and make a mental note of what content you do want to watch. So let's say there's three movies and three TV series serieses that you could binge watch on. Well, then you just buy one more month inside that 10 month allocation that you allow, a 10 month grace period that you're allowed. And then effectively, if you've only spent one month's worth of money on Netflix but watched so much content for those uh, particular amount of dollars that you're paying. Um, another user points out though that a lot of people do complain about the, con the lack of content, the supposed lack of content on Netflix, but if you go to realgood.com it actually shows you the entire library so then you can see more clearly beyond that basic interface that exists on Netflix because it doesn't do itself any favors. Because the same movie crops up like three or four times. What's the point in that? I'll put the link in the show notes though, so then you can have a look at it yourself. If I do have one complaint, it's with the search engine itself. If I type the office, because I've never seen the office, the US version, if I type it, it shows it. And if I tap on it, it's not available. So it's like, well, why is it in there in the first place? It gives me that idea that there's more content on there than what there actually is. But I don't, other than that, I don't have a problem with Netflix and moving forward, as I said, I want to focus on using Netflix instead of going to the cinema because it just gives me a lot less stress and uh, saves me on other aspects of my life. So that's my philosoph philosophical take on it. Thank you for listening or watching and uh, I'll see you later.